on the floor. If you try and attack me or if you try and run away, this dog is going to come and bite you. Do you understand? Blue, stay. Stay. Come on, boy. Ah! Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Baloo has saved my life on many occasions. He's my brother, my best friend in the whole world. And Baloo is undisputedly one of the best tracking dogs in Southern Africa. Um, he's from a very specific um, line of Belgian Malinois. As that you can see by his size, he's, he's much bigger than your average Malinois. Boy. Boy. Baloo has been with me since six weeks old. So we like using Malinois of the structure for human tracking. Because of the stride, because of the height, puts him above the grass line. Got an exceptional nose and an exceptional ability to follow a human scent. People have asked me before, um, you know, if I had to choose between my firearm or my dog in the field, which one would I take? And I'll take the dog before, you know. My dog has saved my life more than my firearm has. Working out there, and I'm very uncomfortable um, working out and um, dealing fighting against poachers without the use of a canine, I feel. It's probably the best tool and best attribute we could have in the bush. You can see the awareness of the dog, you know, it misses nothing. Smiling in here, so looking into the oncoming wind, smiling any sense, anything coming in the wind direction, which is that direction, which you'll see them take quite often. High ear pose, sees interest, air scenting. High ear pose shows that he's in the game, he's nice. Low tail position. Shows his nose, he's worked us out. You know something's coming, it's my change in behavior. Knowing that we're gonna be doing the tracking with him, that changes his behavior. So he feels, he lives off my energy as I do off his. So already, he's already seen that we're approaching something I can see by his focus and he's looking. So already a change in behavior. So exceptional, you know, had we had to come across personnel or fresh human scent, his demeanor will change so much. That's what he was indicating on there's a sheep up ahead that he's been smelling. We don't want the dogs reacting negatively to any livestock or any wildlife. So uh, these dogs are all game trained as you can see with the loose lead. Naturally all dogs come in from wolf, you know, wolf and sheep. So this is about as real as it gets as far as control goes because they've got a natural instinct to um, wanting to hunt that you can um, you can only redirect you can never take out blue leaf boy the rhino side we're looking at half a million rhinos uh, that were on the planet a hundred years ago you know and to think in a hundred years that we've gone from half a million rhinos down to 20,000 rhinos globally means that we're only sitting with you know, 6% of, of the population left. So dogs are essential in, in saving the species. It's, it's been proven. And um, what dogs bring to anti-poaching is the same what the dogs brought to, to Iraq and Afghanistan in, in the war that they had that side. You know, dogs, their ability is irreplaceable by man or machine. Their ability to follow human scent, their ability to find contraband. Even in today's modern world, um, there's just nothing um, available, no technology available that can perform that function. So we use many different dogs in anti-poaching. Um, we've got um, different categories of anti-poaching. So on the detection side, we use Sable Shepherds and uh, Belgian Malinois. And on the apprehension side, we use Pitbull Terriers and also Belgian Malinois. And then uh, on the human tracking side, we use Belgian Malinois, German Shorthair Pointers. So um, we use uh, breed specific, depending on the function that uh, we're trying to achieve. We also use South African Bur Bulls with their natural ability for protecting livestock from dangerous game. The excellent bush dogs give us early warning to approaching dangerous game and so forth. So depending on what um, job we're trying to achieve out in the field will be dependent on what canine we will use to perform that function. While I'm busy searching you, I want you to attack me. You copy? Blue sit. Stay. 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 Go for it. Ah! Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. The dog will automatically break his stay to come and assist me. Blue Hill. 
So um, with real poachers, it intensifies completely. My panic, my feeling flows through the lead and it goes into the dog. So as soon as I start feeling the adrenaline, so does the dog and it works as a combination and the dogs pick up on it. <laughs> Bonds are incredibly strong between handle and dog. So humans are 90% um, verbal and 10% body language. Dogs are 90% body language and 10% verbal, so they are extreme opposite. So the only way an, a human can communicate with a canine is for a human to be able to understand the canine's body language. The dogs do a better job because they understand body language, they pick up on our body language quickly and they understand us, but it's for the handler to understand the dog, the change in behavior, the tail rise, the ear position, everything, you know, and once that understanding is in place, it's such an asset and the only way that one can reach that understanding is to have that bond. So we say it flows through the lead. So if you don't have a genuine connection with your canine, you're not going to be able to perform the functions that are required at hand. When the dogs become of such high value and achieve such good results in anti-poaching and the dogs themselves become targeted by the syndicate members. I could probably count the nights that this dog has been away from me on one hand in its lifetime. So he's my soulmate. So like he looks after me, I've got to look after him as well and it's a, it's a team effort to keep each other safe.